Good evening, Americans, and welcome to The Ed Show tonight. We start with our rolling coverage, breaking news that is unfolding in upstate New York. Two senior New York State officials tell NBC News that Richard Matt, the man on your screen right there, was one of the two men who escaped from upstate New York Correctional Facility, has been shot and killed by law enforcement officials. Details of the shooting have not been released by law enforcement as of yet. The escape took place on June 6th. This is day 21 in a very heavily wooded area. And the shooting apparently took place in the Titus Mountain area, which is about 15 miles south of the Canadian border. Let's go right to NBC's John Yang, who joins us now by phone from Owl's Head, New York. John, the latest. It is. Uh, this is uh, now still going on, Ed. As you say, we now know that Richard Matt has been, has been killed. You know, this is the first confirmed sighting of Richard Matt since he, before he left prison. Uh, uh, almost uh, three weeks ago now, tomorrow. Uh, this all happened very, very fast. They were having uh, a sort of a, a, for a long time looked like they really didn't have any idea where these guys were. And then the big break came, started last weekend, when there was a break-in at a, a, a summer camp uh, cabin in Mount, near Mountain View, near Owl's Head, in this area, uh, about 20 miles from the prison. Uh, someone uh, was going toward their cabin, saw that it had been broken into, saw, either saw or heard someone fleeing from it, went in, found half-eaten food. The police were able to take that food and use D and uh, uh, you, uh, determine from DAN DNA uh, testing that at least one of the inmates, uh, fleeing inmates, had been there. Then again, they, they searched that area. Things seemed to have gone cold until yesterday. Here in Malone, they found another break-in at a cabin. More evidence was found sent to the uh, state labs. Again, DNA uh, suggested or proved that one of the inmates had been there. This morning, more evidence was found in a field nearby. And now this closing in on them, they've got Richard Sweat. Uh, they've, I'm sorry, they've, uh, they've shot and killed Richard Matt. The question is, is David Sweat far behind? They have no evidence. They've said all along they have no evidence the two have split up. So the assumption is that David Sweat is somewhere in this area. They are, they are uh, clamping down here, hoping that he is still in this area and that they can get, uh, now uh, get him rather quickly. Ed? John, do we know where, know where the shooting took place? And do we know any details of the shooting? We don't know yet. We do know that it is uh, apparently in an area around a, uh, a, a ski area, Titus Mountain. This has been where actually they moved a lot of the focus last night. They pulled down a lot of the checkpoints uh, inside uh, Owl's Head and Mountain View last night and moved a lot of the operations here uh, or to, to that area. Uh, we don't know any more details. Uh, this has really just happened within the past hour. Uh, or so. So it's unfolding rather quickly, and we don't know many details yet. All right. John Yang with us tonight, NBC News reporting from Owl's Head, New York. Let's go now to Clint Van Zant, uh, MSNBC contributor and former FBI profiler. Clint, thanks for your time tonight on this crucial story yeah. as it's unfolding. Uh, let's talk about the area, the terrain. It would seem to me that this heavily wooded oh. area of upstate New York was probably one of their biggest advantages being uh, on the lamb. I, I mean, to be able to elude law enforcement. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you're right, Ed. I think what we're going to find out is once these individuals escaped and once Joyce Mitchell, who was their escape getaway driver, once she didn't show up, uh, it looks like as complicated as their escape plan was outside of the to get out of the walls. Once they got outside, they didn't have a plan B. Plan B was let's go from cabin to cabin, let's hide from tree to tree. It looks like what these guys have probably been doing is working their way through some of the over perhaps 1,000 little hunting cabins, one room, two room, three room, little cabins up there, breaking in, using the food, maybe the clothing, getting access to weapons, and then moving on again. And as I said, Ed, 
I think these two, the, the relationship that may have kept them together is obviously they needed each other. One needed to sleep, another need to be on guard. They needed to protect each other. But once they were seen, twice they were seen supposedly last week, once running out of a cabin and the second time their DNA was found and yet a second cabin, once law enforcement had that, I think it confirmed what they believed, Ed, that these guys had not been able to elude this circle of between 800 and 1,100 law enforcement officers that have kept these two confined in this heavily wooded, thick area to move through. And I've heard people say, well, why can't they catch them? They've got planes, they've got infrared. Well, that those woods are so thick, Ed, that if you and I were standing 10 feet feet apart, we might not see each other, as well as anything that moves in the dark, be it a deer, a bear, a dog, a human being, is going to give out a heat signal for these airplanes and helicopters. And that's been a tremendous challenge for law enforcement. And realize every police officer, FBI agent, ATF agent moving through those woods, he or she is a potential target for these two individuals that the state police have said are armed and dangerous, and I think most of us believe likely would not allow themselves to be taken alive. All right, uh, Clint Van Zant, stay with us. I just want to bring our audience up to date. In case you just joined us, the two fugitives who are on the run, one of them has been shot and killed by law enforcement in upstate New York. Richard Matt, 48 years old, convicted murderer, has been shot and killed. David Sweat is still on the loose, and there is a very intense search taking place at this moment in upstate New York, uh, searching, obviously, for David Sweat. They don't have any information as to whether these two had split up and details of the shooting have not been released by law enforcement as of yet. We're expecting that, uh, I would imagine, pretty soon. But, uh, Clint, it, it's very uh, interesting that there had to be a definite strategy by these two fugitives because they didn't steal a car and they didn't uh, uh, take anyone hostage. What do you make of that? Uh, there, there seemed to be a very... Uh, direct strategy by these two to elude law enforcement in a certain way using the woods to their advantage. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. Ed. I think they probably decided together if we try to steal a car, if we try to take a hostage, anything like this, that's going to tell law enforcement exactly to the square foot where we were at a given time. So I think instead they made their way along these trails. And Ed, know that there are hiking trails, there are ATV trails that lead from Danamora to Owls Head to Malone. It, pass, it passes through these trails pass through all these areas that we're told these individuals have been, been cited, their DNA has been found. But, you know, when you realize there are so many guys on the inside, so many convicts on the inside, and they spend their every waking hour, number one, thinking of how they're going to escape and trying to develop information of what's outside. So I would assume either by hook or crook, these two found out within a 50, 75 mile square area, how you move from point A to point B without a vehicle, in this case on foot, but that was a very poor plan B. It didn't get them out of the area, and again, law enforcement has reacted so quickly to every potential movement. Even though you can't reach out and touch them, they knew that they knew these two were still in the, this area, and the tenacity that these men and women have shown, I think, is terrific, especially we've had these ups and downs, Ed, for the past two weeks or so. Everybody, you know, runs to a spot, we think we've seen them, then we don't see them and then it happens again but law enforcement's not given up they've stayed they've stayed on this hunt and as the state police told us yesterday there was a high probability that one or more of these individuals had had secured a weapon a shotgun a rifle a handgun something from one or more of these hunting cabins so i think every one of these 1100 law enforcement officers realized when they finally see these individuals, if they raise a weapon knowing that these guys likely might not want to be taken alive, I don't think anyone was going to play games with them. This was a very deadly game of hide and seek. Right now, we know one of the two has lost. The search continues for the second. 